Hi there, and welcome to this second part of this video tutorial where we're looking at creating this scene in Blender of a stylized ship. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everyone who's signed up to blendertutorials.org so far. I can't wait to start giving you news in the upcoming weeks. BlenderTutorials.org will be an amazing experience and I can't wait to start sharing things with you in the coming weeks. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some water for our boat. Let's first add a plane by going shift day, then adding a mesh type and then plane. After we've added a plane, let's now just add an ocean modifier to it. Go to the modifiers tab and add an ocean. Now, if I was to press spacebar or animate through this, we'll see that currently there's no ocean actually simulating. It's not gonna be moving. What we have to do is we have to cycle through this time value here. Make sure that your time is currently set to zero or one beginning of your animation. Go to the side of your time value and click on that little dot. It will turn yellow. You'll also see in the timeline, a little diamond has appeared. That is our keyframe. We're gonna change our workspace to be a graph editor because we're gonna be using a little bit of trickery here to get this to animate through for us without us having to do any other work. Let's set our frame sometime into the future and we're going to change the time value to an arbitrary amount. This isn't final. Let's right click and set the interpolation type to linear just so that it's not fading in and out. Bring up your sidebar with the N key and then go to your modifiers. You wanna add a cycles modifier to your current animation channel. You then wanna change the after value to repeat with offset. That's gonna create a continuous line going up infinitely. As you can see, as we play our animation forward now, our ocean will be moving, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna reset my workspace to be a timeline now. So to get the ship moving on this now animated service, I'm gonna create an empty object and I'm gonna place it somewhere inside the hull. I'm gonna call this empty ship control. Let me just lower that boat into the water just a little bit. And now I'm just gonna hold shift and drag that ship into the ship control object so that it is parented to it. So now I can actually control my ship with just that empty, which is really nice. With our empty selected, we're gonna to navigate to the constraints panel, and then we're going to add a simple shrink wrap constraint and set the target to be our ocean. As you can see, when we animate through this, our ship is gonna bob up and down on the waves. Now this is already pretty cool, but we're gonna to add to this system even more but first, let's animate our ship. Select the ship control object and push it back on Y to your desired starting position. After that, let's set a keyframe. So I for insert and set a location keyframe. Scrub forward to frame 80 and move your ship into your desired position and set another keyframe. With those two keyframes selected, right click and change your interpolation mode to linear. This will just ensure that the movement doesn't pause at the beginning and slow down towards the end. Okay, so now that we have our ship bobbing up and down in the water, let's make this a little bit more realistic because it should be going down on the waves and then coming up as the waves hit its bow. And we're just gonna create a quick rig to sort of emulate this effect. Let's go into wireframe mode by pressing Z on our keyboard. I'm going to wireframe. And then let's push our timeline back to zero. And I'm gonna duplicate the ship control empty. And we'll move it up on Y, so close to the front of the ship. We then wanna change the name of this empty to be called something unique, like ship control front, for example. With your ship control front selected, delete both keyframes on it as they're inherited from the duplication method. We're now gonna parent that control to the ship control. As you can see, as our ship control moves through the water, the front is also gonna bow a little bit earlier. Now we're gonna create a bone. So go up to armature and then select single bone and let's rename this armature to something appropriate. In edit mode of our bone, select the tip and we're just gonna to go to a side view and drag it out somewhere close by to our ship control front empty. After you've done that, we can go 
to pose mode, then we're gonna select our bone and add a bone constraint. We're gonna select a stretch to bone constraint and target our ship control front. Perfect. Then let's add another bone constraint and let's add a copy location constraint. And we're going to drag that up above our stretch two and target our ship control target. Perfect. So that's pretty much done at this point. Now we just have to sort of reorganize this a little bit and get it working so that the ship mesh is gonna follow the bone instead of the empty. To do that, we're just gonna do a real simple armature modifier. So I'm just gonna clear the parent with Alt P. Then we're gonna add a modifier to our ship and that modifier is gonna be an armature modifier. Now we're gonna select our rig object and now we need to tell it what vertex group that we wanna control with our bone. So we're gonna create a new vertex group and call it control. And we're gonna go into edit mode and assign everything to that control. Then in the rig, we just wanna make sure that our bone is also called control because there's a link between the names of our vertex group and the bones. Now you'll probably notice that nothing's really happened. This is because we need to set our ship to be the child of the rig and we haven't set our vertex group in our modifier. So let's do that one quickly. Then I'm just gonna drop my ship by holding shift into the rig and we should see everything is working nicely now. The bow is dipping on the waves, it's moving across the waves, and yeah, it's a pretty simplistic rig to set up and get working, and it works fairly competently. So this sort of brings us to the end of this second part of this little mini tutorial series. I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial thus far. If you have, please give it a like as it really helps the channel out. Also, as I stated at the beginning, I am setting up a new website for Blender tutorials. It's gonna be unlike anything else out there. So if you haven't already, please go check it out. You can sign up to a newsletter or you can ring the bell button and hit the subscribe button below to be notified on a new video's release. This is Hayden Falzon from blendertutorials.org signing off.